Does anybody have any questions? Or Ian, do you have any questions or anything you'd like to consult or just? Uh, yeah, yeah, yes. I have actually. Um, I, I know that um, I've received a lot of instruction about the, um, the, the kind of general um, sense to develop when you're doing formal meditation. Right. I, I was wondering if, if you could say anything about the, the sense to develop when you're trying to, to, to develop uh, mindfulness in day, during day-to-day -day activities. Okay, you mean uh, as opposed to sitting meditation, right? You mean day-to-day -day activities uh, up besides the sitting meditation, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, right. M mindfulness during day-to-day -day activities. Okay. It, it, I, I have been told there's two, there's two meditations. There's the meditation when you're sitting, then there's the also mindfulness. Right. The rest, the rest of the time as well. Yeah, mindfulness is a lot of emphasized uh, these days. Sure. Mindfulness helps us to deal with our meditation, I mean, with our mind in a good way. Everything fits in better if we are mindful. But uh, mindfulness must always go hand in hand with relaxation which is sometimes forgotten by some teachers. Mm. Anyway, um, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, in Dhammakaya, the Dhammakaya meditation method, the way to practice mindfulness in our daily activities is to confirm the center space or the center. Whenever we are anything, we just take the center with us. Don't leave the center behind. So when we are uh, doing anything in our daily lives, we can connect with our center. And this is actually called by our abbot. This is actually, uh, he, he calls this uh, like um, one of the, he calls it the, like uh, the homework of the meditator. That's what he calls it. Maybe you've heard of that. Mm. And so sometimes they are called a bit, uh, a bit in a funny way, uh, the homework assignments of the meditator. And there are actually 10 items, but they come basically come down to creating a good mood for meditation and keep that mood throughout the day. That's one thing. And the second thing is to, to stick to your, um, to, to keep the connection with the center throughout the day, which is the second part. And the third part is to now and then keep uh, a record of your meditation experiences in the form of a diary or something like that. So um, these are the three uh, in the, in, in short, you could say those t 10 items can be summarized in these three things. So when you talk about mindfulness, that mostly involves the, the two first things. One of them is involves the, the keeping the right mood in med of meditation. So in our temple, we often emphasize that when we do something good, we remind ourselves of the good thing we have done. Not to be arrogant, but simply to be joyful about that, that we have managed to do something good, that we are fortunate to do that, and also that we know that that goodness will take care of us. Uh, so whenever we do something good, we know that that goodness that we have done will come back to us. This is the strength of the goodness and the nature of goodness. So we suppose we are helping out a friend or suppose we are respectfully and uh, with kindness uh, communicating with our parents or helping out our parents. Those are the basic forms of goodness. Or even if we perform generosity, if we give to somebody something, give to friends or give to a poor, person or gift to the temple, those are good deeds that we should be allowed to be joyful about and should be aware of. Okay, I just think the bat has arrived. <laughs> if you can hear, if you hear very closely, you can hear the bat. <laughs> the bats in our temple, in our church. <laughs> That's 
Okay, anyway, um, so this is, this is uh, keeping the good mood in meditation. So uh, we have the, that part is very important because it helps us to find ease and relaxation, even outside of the sitting meditation. So I once met a very uh, well-known meditation teacher in our temple and I asked him, what is your secret? in uh, meditating uh, every day and keeping up the development of your meditation. And he said, uh, I always uh, remind myself of the good things I've done and allow these things to feed me, to, 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 uh, to, to, to help me improve my life. And um, so it's not like we are thinking about our good deeds to compare with others. That's a different thing. We think of our good deeds to help us feel joyful and be aware of the power of goodness. And then uh, when we are using these kind of, uh, uh, um, um, these kind of techniques, we can help to keep the mood of meditation alive during the day, which Kunyai, uh, uh, the, the nun who founded our temple, she called this the, uh, uh, to allow a blessing, to, to bring a blessing into your mind throughout the day. And um, um, then the other thing is to be mindful, right? In mindfulness trainings, you will learn to be mind <clears throat> sorry, to be mindful of every action that we do, whether it's physical, your verbal action, or even your mental action. In this kind of tradition, Dhammakaya tradition, we are simply aware by being at the center or connecting or reconfirming that there is a center here, the existence of the center, and we confirm that for ourselves. So uh, if we are often aware of the center, it will be also easier uh, uh, to, to reconnect and to, we become more acquainted with it. At this point, we do not need to be very, um, uh, if we are not good at visualization, we do not need to worry too much about that. Visualization is simply like a sort of landmark in which you mark something here to be able to easily get back to it. But it's not a very, uh, it's not absolutely required to always visualize. So if we practice like this, uh, wherever we are going, whatever we are doing, we are actually aware of everything. Um, in the past, uh, our teachers used to compare this with a spider's web because the spider is always at the center of the web and knows everything in the web. You know what I mean? So yes. you, you, but I think recent, in recent years, they, I have not heard this metaphor so much anymore. <laughs> Perhaps it's not the most popular metaphor. It's, it's not a very kind creature, a spider. But uh, it, it does make, it makes sense, right? I mean, it's uh, everything that the spider is aware of, you know, it all is, he's all aware of everything because he's at the center of the web. Yeah. This used to be a very vivid met metaphor in our temple, even to the extent that stickers were distributed with spider webs on it. <laughs> and these were, were attached to walls and everything to just remind people of the center. <laughs> But this is like way back uh, about 15 years ago in, in the Makai temple in, in Thailand. <laughs> but these days I have not seen any spider stickers in recently. <laughs> anyway, um, um, uh, this is actually a, a metaphor to show that we do need not be aware of all every single action that we do, we say or speak. We do not need to focus on every single action separately we simply uh, allow our mind to be at the center and it's like we can see everything happening. So this is how we look at Dhamma, in Dhammakaya meditation, how we look at mindfulness. Mm. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't know if this will help, but you should uh, try to just uh, reconfirm the center, uh, the, what do you call it, the, the center space every now and then and then you find uh, it will help you even though it's just a thought but it will help you in your daily life 
So I'm just make sure I make sure I got all the pieces here. So we're reconfirming the center of the body. Like just maybe like, you know, I have like a gratitude reminder on my phone. So I okay. keep like a yeah, I just told my phone to, you know, it uh I think it does it every four hours, it just dings. Okay. It says big gratitude reminder. So That's like, nice. Yeah, I stole actually um is Laney in the back. Um we were doing the Dhammakaya and Portuguese recording and mm. on her phone. So I stole the idea from her. <laughs> but oh, okay, okay. Yes, yeah, she's in the back. But um so but to so to confirm, I mean to make sure I got this make sure I got it right. So reconfirm the center of the body and then reconfirm your your uh, your good deeds that you that you've done and to try to keep that try to keep that spirit going throughout the day. Right. So there's always these two uh, parts in meditation practice, whether sitting or doing any other thing. There's the part of mindfulness and there's the part of what you could call well-being. In Thai language, we call it sabai. Sometimes it's translated as relaxation. Sometimes it's translated as uh, ease or comfort. But I prefer the translation well-being because it's more broad, similar to the Thai word. Okay. And um, this involves everything that uh, makes our mind more happy and peaceful, which is not a focus, but it's more uh, a feeling of comfort and happiness, which is, um, um, these are two need to be in balance. If you have only mindfulness and mindfulness and mindfulness, then it's like your, your mind is dry. It doesn't have anything to swim in. <laughs> so we also need to have that aspect of well-being to be at ease and comfortable and uh, just uh, reminding ourselves of the things we have done that are good or even to remind ourselves of all the good things we have received from others as you mentioned uh, in, in terms of gratefulness then, then we are actually uh, um, practicing uh, um, for our mind to develop well-being these two need to be hand in hand if we only have mindfulness then we will develop a sort of dry mindfulness and we will get stuck it, on the other hand if we only emphasize the happy feeling in meditation then we will be um, we will be missing out on something we will lack the mindfulness and eventually your, your meditation will not be able to develop that part and you might find that you have many you have even more thoughts or that you are becoming sleepy in meditation. So these two need always be hand in hand, these two things. Mm -hmm. So throughout the day, it's of course not always perfectly possible to relax your body and your mind perfectly. So there are other ways to keep your well-being alive throughout the day. And one of these is to remind yourself of the good deeds that you, that you did. And another thing is to, uh, you could also use a more uh, um, intellectual method. Some people prefer a more intellectual approach. For example, they prefer to reflect on the impermanence of things throughout the day. This also will help to create the part of well-being because you learn to let go. You, you know what I mean, right? There's a balance of these two. Can, can yes. you follow? Yes, yes. So the ancients, they used to say that for somebody who is more uh, like a devotion type, uh, we call it, the, 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 they call it um, like the, the faithful character, the person who is more devotional in nature. He might like to think of the good deeds that he has done or she has done and uh, or other people have done. Uh, or might have like to think about inspirational figures in, in your life, who, which people have been good examples in your life. These are more the devotional parts of, of uh, spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. And then there is the other part, which is more intellectual, which is about reflection on, on, on the impermanence of things, on the death, on death and uh, that kind of things. These are two, uh, it depends on your character. Gotcha. Right. Mm. So it's, it's, 
you just kind of keep practicing until you find the balance between the two. I guess. Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay. It can give you a lot of strength, you know, if you if you find that you can take this with you in your daily life. Sometimes there will be moments in which you find new strength or new mindfulness which you didn't think were possible when people approach you or when you expect to respond more negatively you will be able to find a pause for thought in such moments when you didn't think it was possible so it's a very powerful practice to to keep the dhammakaya meditation uh, in your daily life as a form of mindfulness mm. does that make any sense <laughs> I, I agree like i agree with you okay. <laughs> i agree with you. it's um we also a couple of us have the dou books and we uh yeah and um i've read that in the dou books right and uh, one of the one of the things that was in in dou was also to before you go to sleep is to recall your merits before you go to sleep at night right 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 that's that's one of the so called homework assignments yeah yeah so when you were talking about it i was I think maybe three of us in the room have done have done that class. So okay. We were like, you know, it's like, oh yeah, we have we have homework, huh? So, and, right. uh, <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody keeps a journal. Do any of you guys keep journals? Meditation journal? No. Yeah, no. I do. Okay, so. Hey, Mama, I have um John Cabot's and the guy. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so one of us is a journaler also. Can you see her? <laughs> I don't know if you can see her. I'm sorry, I'm not good with the camera. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's it. They, we have them in the center in uh, Stockport as well. In the, Ian is, uh, Ian is showing us. <laughs> mm, I can't see him. I can't see you, Ian. Oh, well. Compliment others. This actually is the... Um, is the original order, which is, I think, uh, is the order in Thai language. Oh, yeah? There's, these, these days there are two versions. One of them is chronological, which is the, the version which was once translated by Rumpi Nicolas. And the other one is, uh, is uh, directly translated from Thai, which is a different order. But it's, it's the same. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah, when we, when we are recording our meditation experiences, we will often find that we become more aware of what we're doing. It will be helping us. It's similar to some people who are in therapy. They keep meditation diaries. If you ever, ever heard of that, especially in Freudian or Jungian therapy. Mm -hmm. And then they become more aware of their dreams because they record their dreams. But uh, actually the dreams are still the same. It's just that people are becoming more aware of them. And the mm. same, it's, it's the same with meditation. When you keep uh, notes, then you will become more aware. But even if you do not physically make a diary, you can still become, you can still make some notes, mental notes at the end of each meditation uh, mm. session to just, uh, how was the meditation going? Is there anything that you need to uh, spend more attention to? I mean, need to look at more deeply? Or, Sometimes we, we, there are certain things in our life which affect our meditation. Mm -hmm. 